Welcome to Reflector Hub TV. Get set for an encounter through God's Word with God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you, so you will do what you do. We're in a move. This is a move. We need a move. We're in the mood. So here's where I start my journey. I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Congratulations. Let's do a recap on what I taught you the last time. That the greatest need of an unbeliever is what? Salvation. If you buy a house for an unbeliever, you feed him well done. But it will not take him to heaven the greatest need anytime you see an unbeliever the greatest need for that unbeliever is salvation is that true he has passed the first gate when he comes to the second gate he's now saved is that true what is the greatest need for a believer transformation what is transformation the process that makes you like christ in experience transformation is the name given to the process that makes you like christ in experience in all his power in all his glory the fullness of himself transformation how do you know you are transformed when your thinking and your understanding and your belief systems begin to subscribe to the word of god that's how you measure transformation you don't measure transformation by the vastness of information you are receiving you can receive many useless spiritual information doesn't mean you are transformed you have to gauge your transition based on the reference of scripture to what degree has your entire life submitted to the ways of god in experience that is the degree to which you are transformed so the greatest need of a believer is transformation and can i tell you it takes a long time of partnership with the holy spirit and the word to bring transformation this is the probably the hardest of a believer's journey to a life of excellence and a life that represents the purposes of God transformation in one minute you can be saved do you agree with me because it's not something you did on your own part the moment you accept Jesus Christ the Bible says that you are saved so it does not take anything to be saved but I wish transformation you just say Lord I believe I'm transformed then you jump no transformation is a long period for many it would take decades the first thing that happens maybe i should digress a bit and explain to you how transformation happens the first thing that happens is not receiving new information the first thing that happens is deconstructing the negative devilish ideas that have come from culture that have come from our pasts that have come from the limitations of territory and do you know why it's difficult because you will not want to leave it that's all you've known all your life so now when the Holy Spirit brings a superior proposition to your life how then do you give up what you've held all your life you were trained based on that knowledge you have lived based on that knowledge it's called status quo you have developed a system of comfort now here comes the Word of God proposing to you a superior idea higher than all you've known higher than all you've learned it's not something you it takes a level of yieldedness you see that and because god will not usurp your will even though he's god almighty he will not veto and say whether you like it or not mm -mm. he will move at the pace of your cooperation is that true so he begins to expose to you god's ways in the area of spiritual growth he shows you how this thing happens in the kingdom 
now he teaches you about purpose and destiny now he teaches you about finances now he teaches you about your family he teaches you about the reality of demons the realm of the spirit i set before you life and what death i set before you blessing and cursing you would think it should be obvious that any right thinking person should naturally think pick blessings but it's not so not so not so it's like i drop um a plate of food is that true and i drop poison and i say pick one you will think it should be very natural to come and pick a plate of food you try it and see the options that people will choose you don't choose with your hands you choose with your mind your hand only obeys what your mind has chosen your body only gravitates towards the direction of your belief system you have to understand that the body is an executor of your belief systems the body moves to honor your belief system if your body moves left it was your belief system that brought it there if your body moves right it was your belief system that moved it there if you are poor and broke and suffering it's not your job it's not your hands it's your mind that kept it that way if you are experiencing the favor of god and the goodness of god it was your mind in partnership with the holy spirit if you live an excelling life is the spirit of god in partnership with your mind are you following please this is very important so it says if these things be in you and abound and stay why because remember in the parable of the sower satan was watching as god was about to sow seeds the seed the bible says is the heart of man is that true i mean the seed is the word the soil the heart of man so when the word is about to come don't think you are the only one paying attention satan is also paying attention what information is god bringing to your destiny he's bringing an information that passion towards god provides profit for your destiny he listens as soon as that word drops immediately he will come and attempt to pick it let me tell you how you know that there have been seeds that the devil has been picking in your life ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth have you seen people like that no matter what you want to talk about i know genesis chapter ah, 1 verse 28 deuteronomy 8 verse 18 joshua 1 verse 8 john 1 5 i know in fact from he's not he's going to go to wales here four six just be watching the question is what is happening to your life now listen you can stand with the truth and it is up to you to know what to do with it there are people who allow the truth change them like john there are people who were afraid of the truth and ran away like peter there are those who we're making money out of the truth rather than being changed by it like judas it is your choice to know what to do with the truth some make money out of it others run away from it because of the hardness of the truth is that true but others allow themselves to be changed by it so tonight very briefly we have a few minutes and this will be will begin today and then we'll wrap up tomorrow why do i take this time to come and spend two days to teach number one because it's a spiritual responsibility number two it is a communication of my passion my love for you and my sincere desire to see everyone rise beyond the limitations that have come as a result of background you see that once people are exposed to an atmosphere of truth they become dangerous people positively speaking just pick anybody whether a villager whether whatever it is comes from a hamlet comes from a city comes from wherever you just keep the people and expose them to truth and let their hearts be open and i show you 
a people like like an arrow that is being sharpened ready to be shot from the quiver of a professional it does not matter any nation any tribe any tongue i have preached this a thousand times that the difference between any two people the difference between the quality of their life and the degree to which their lives are able to excel and serve the purposes of the kingdom is not the love of god for the same lord is rich unto all god loves an american the way he loves an european he loves an asian the way he loves someone in zaria or nigeria or any village somewhere across the world there is no problem about the love of god the difference is number one access to light the difference between any two people the difference between you and the person you admire the difference between you and your future is number one the level of methodical approach to light spiritual illumination alongside the corresponding transformation that comes from that light that is the first difference number two the level of relationships that come in honor of that transformed version of you because there are relationships that honor transformation is that true yes so your connections change to match your transformation and gives you a higher leverage towards life and destiny and then number three the kind and the dimension of grace that is at work in your life this is what differentiates people that's it if you put a dead body from america you put another dead body from europe you put a dead body from high in the go you put a dead body from your village or my village you put a dead body from one african nation you don't call it a white dead body you don't call it a black dead body you don't call it an european dead body no they are all dead bodies is that true so the difference is not the color of skin the difference is not even just the privileges that people have with respect to what god provides those things are inconsequential it doesn't matter how you start there is a provision where you can rise and you can catch up do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes sir but we do not just rise by intention it takes more than intention it takes light arise shine isaiah 60 and verse 1 for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you hallelujah the word of god has always brought forth light and life to the people jesus said the words that i speak they are spirit and they are life i believe the word of god has come to you today as spirit and as life i believe you have been mightily blessed i would like you to follow us by clicking the notification bell so you will receive every notification on our updates and also stay updated through God's word. Share this video and also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. God bless you.